the other day i released an updated guide for alexander the great in rise of kingdoms and you guys really seemed to like it so today we're gonna take a look at his cavalry cousin from kvk2 saladin probably saying that five times fast cavalry cousin from kvk2 cavalry cousin from kvk2 cavalry <laughs> but i'm just gonna warn you guys at the beginning of the video things aren't looking so great for saladin but later in the video we're gonna talk about how things could change for him in the next couple of months and also why things for him should change for the better of the game but first what's going on guys cheers before we get into it about 70 percent of you guys are not subscribed so consider doing that and clicking the thumbs up button while you're down there okay the first thing we're going to do is quickly go over the skills for saladin this will just serve as a refresher for some of you older players and also if you're a new player to the game it'll be good to get familiar with what exactly saladin is doing and don't worry it's not going to take as long as alexander the great because his skills are much longer than that on saladin his active skill has a 1000 rage requirement and it deals a single target 1400 damage factor but also reduces that target's march speed by 30 percent and its healing received by 40 percent for five seconds so we're going to talk about this later in the video when we discuss kind of how things have changed for saladin over time but this slowdown is important because it's not the most powerful slowdown in the game but it is one of the longest slowdowns in the game with five seconds being a very long slowdown the second skill very vanilla here gives you 20 percent attack 20 percent defense and five percent march speed this is obviously of course exclusively for cavalry the third skill is one of the things that make him shine and that is taking 30 percent less skill damage and 20 percent less counter attack damage and this skill actually aged pretty well because as we see in the meta even still to this day skill damage and especially aoe skill damage is still reigning supreme and so taking 30 percent less of that is amazing the fourth skill says you get 15 percent more damage when attacking a city but it can't plunder the city's resources and then the expertise here bumps up the damage factor from 1400 to 1700 on the active skill and it brings that march speed up from 30 percent to 50 percent and the healing received from 40 also up to 50 percent for five seconds and this is one of the best slowdowns in the game however there's a lot working against it so we'll talk about that later but 50 percent for five seconds is actually kind of insane now it's important to keep in mind that when Saladin came into the game in kvk2 his primary role was sort of to counter Richard for cavalry players and that's obviously why you see the massive healing reduction here this is why you see a snare and a slowdown so that way you could potentially run away I mean cavalry are already faster but realistically Saladin was known as being extremely free to play friendly because you really do not need this fourth skill at all and because the fourth skill is the one that you don't need you can easily skip this one when you are choosing to skill him up because you could just skill lock that fourth skill and then boom you guaranteed get the skills that you want but also he had a pretty generous amount of stats and he was very tanky on this third skill which is something that you know you got to remember back then commanders like Genghis Khan and Cao Cao were all the rage and these were you know really really squishy commanders and so to have somebody so tanky in the form of Saladin but also be so cheap he really aged super well for a really long time but these days I'm here to tell you that Saladin he unfortunately is not in the unique position that Alexander the Great is in wherein if you missed the last video I highly recommend you check it out but Alexander the Great actually has really great use these days in 2024 because of the introduction of Liu Che unfortunately Saladin doesn't have that many things on his kit that could age super well so yes he is sort of tanky but his damage factor is low he has no AoE he has no supportive nature in the fact that he's not buffing anybody around him and he also doesn't have any debuffs that he's applying to the target right like the target he's hitting is you know besides the march speed and healing reduction it is what it is and so he's kind of very vanilla when it comes to a lot of these things and he's just a very okay commander these days whereas commanders like alexander the great because he has shielding and he has debuffs and all this other stuff like there are unique things that he can do and so Saladin while he was cheaper to invest in at the start and was arguably almost as good as Alexander the Great his uh, efficiency has really fallen off a cliff as power creep has kind of edged him out of the meta and in order to help illustrate this I pulled in a bunch of the most relevant open field cavalry commanders in rise of kingdoms and I just pulled their raw stats into a table and you could see here on the total stats breakdown you'll see that Minamoto and Takeda technically have the highest amount of stats here which is kind of insane followed by that is Cao Cao and Huo the only thing with Cao Cao is he loses 10 percent defense which kind of stinks Huo of course is is shining right now he is absolutely popular off but then you have commanders like Justinian Nevsky and William and if you look here like all these commanders are outclassing Saladin I mean he comes in eighth place here eighth place out of like 13 so he's very much in the middle of the pack if not even worse and some of the commanders down here like it's hard to even compare right Attila has his own thing that he does 
Zhang Yu is very usable. Joan of Arc is very usable, right? So there's some things about these commanders that it's not even really fair to compare them because they're doing a lot more with their kit. So even from, you know, just a pure stats perspective, which is what a lot, you know, that's what Saladin is bringing. He doesn't really shine here anymore. Whereas, you know, a lot of these commanders that are newer, like if you removed them from the game, he would, he would be in a much better place. And keep in mind, that's even with me taking into account the fact that he does have a relic here. Now, unfortunately he got a very small relic the march speed i think was nice because he only had five percent but cavalry didn't like really need march speed that much so i don't know the relic just didn't seem to really move the needle for me and then to compound on top of that when you look at the healing reduction here right this really doesn't do much at all remember he was sort of meant to counter richard but richard is not you don't see richard in the open field anymore and so what commanders in the meta right now do you typically see that are actually healing in the open field i mean you've got a heal on guan but it's very conditional it's only when he exits combat and same thing with huo huo has a great heal but it's very rare you're rarely going to get this heal off in the open field right it's only when you completely sad face an army of course Cao Cao has a pretty powerful heal here but you don't really see Cao Cao in the open field either like he's his time is very much past the only somewhat meta viable commander in the game right now that even consistently heals in the open field is the fourth skill on Boudicca Prime with that 800 healing factor every time she uses an active skill and I guess any defense tree commander that runs medicinal supplies in the open field but like there's just such little healing happening in the open field these days that having a healing effect reduction that's basically nothing it's basically nothing in today's meta unless we see some sort of insane healing commanders coming down the pipeline which is maybe possible the next thing we have to consider is the slowdown right I mean this is obviously a really nice debuff here I think March speed is very important in the open field but then you have to consider what other commanders are doing slowdowns well first of all Liu Che has a 40 percent slowdown for five targets for three seconds it's a shorter duration but it's a better March speed reduction when you're considering a 5551 five, Saladin and most people are running Liu Che these days but also Huo has a 50 percent March speed reduction for three seconds again the duration is a little bit lower but the damage factor is literally almost doubled which is actually crazy and remember he has one of the highest amounts of total stats for cavalry in the game which we talked about just a minute ago but you also have a slowdown on William you have a slowdown on Ethel flood you have a slowdown on the active skill for Boudicca Prime there's a slowdown on Richard there's a slowdown on Cao Cao's active skill there's a slowdown even on Honda but beyond all of that there's also slowdowns that we see even in talents right you could grab uh snare of thorns if you really wanted that or you could grab cage of thorns on anyone with a support tree in the bottom right corner and this is an aoe five target slowdown which is insane so i just gave you 10 examples of other ways you can slow down targets and five of them came into the game after saladin right and so his slowdown was somewhat unique when he first came into the game but now it's very commonplace and there's tons of ways to aoe slow so just to recap his single target damage factor is quite low these days his debuffs literally either don't do anything or are outclassed by 10 other different sources of that same debuff and his stats are below average for legendary cavalry commanders so really the only thing that's kind of aged well is his third skill and that's just not enough now all of that to say is saladin a horrible commander not really he's actually just a very okay-ish commander and the reason for that is because his complete build like when you take into account everything it's okay it's just okay it's not horrible it's not great it's just okay and so is that a commander you want to invest in do you want to invest in an okay commander probably not primary use for saladin in 2024 is you can put him behind another cavalry commander to just make that army a little bit more selfish but a little bit more tanky so for example if you ran a huo primary with saladin secondary you're gonna have one of the tankiest possible cavalry marches in the open field and that's because you're gonna have a ton of attack a ton of defense you're gonna have a, a ridiculous amount of health from the best in slot equipment if you're building correctly for cavalry you'll know that a lot of those pieces have health who already has a ton of defense here for cavalry as well so like you're getting a really tanky package and then on top of all that you have 30 percent less skill damage taken 20 percent less counterattack damage taken both of them have a slowdown like overall you would be a very tanky and very high single target damage cavalry army but again it's a very selfish army you're not doing aoe you're not doing any buffs you, your debuffs aren't that impactful 
useful right they're basically just slowdowns and you could sort of do the same thing with Nevsky right you could do Nevsky primary with salad and secondary and again you would be a very tanky but very selfish decent single target damage and, and like you know is that really what you want in 2024 not really so all that to say you could use him as a tanky secondary to some really high damage commanders or you could run him as a sort of tanky primary because of his talent builds and we're going to talk about talent builds in just a second but because he has the support tree he is pretty tanky in the open field uh, from a talent perspective and you could throw behind him somebody like william if you really wanted to and you could have a, a pretty good secondary supportive march right so for example you could do nevsky primary with joan of arc secondary and then let's say you have the 5551 william and you just didn't want to go for the huo for whatever reason but you have the saladin on the bench you could do a 5551 saladin with william secondary and you know it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt i'm gonna be honest with you guys but you could still use it to some degree of success in 2024 depending on you know if you're an imperium kingdom you know you're probably gonna have a really hard time with that but regardless there are some okay uses for saladin but there's not any great uses for saladin now let me go over a couple of talent builds here they're really they really only vary by one talent point for each build uh here you could see i grabbed buckler shield i grabbed obviously rejuvenate with cage of thorns we grabbed emblazon shield and we grabbed undying fury and then we only had two points left so we put them in halberd now that could be controversial right you could put all three points here and then you could remove one point from either cage of thorns or you could remove one point from buckler shield it really depends on what one point you want to take away the way i look at it is halberd only works on a single troop type right so if you're attacking an infantry or a cavalry then you're not getting literally anything from this whereas all the other talent points that we talked about will always be useful all the time so that's what i think but if you wanted to you could change something like this where if you let's say you don't want cage of thorns at all and you only do two points into rejuvenate so that way you don't overrage then you could come up and grab emblazon shield skip buckler shield grab undying fury and you'll have three points in disarm to just apply a attack reduction to the target and you'll have the full halberd uh, stats here as well which is really nice plus the march speed which is good and finally if you wanted to grab buckler shield not get cage of thorns three points at rejuvenate three points in halberd everything else is the same i think this is another decent choice you could do i still think you should grab buckler shield these days for saladin just because like what else are you really going to grab right like i don't know if you would go all the way to the top of the cavalry tree i don't think rallying cry is great for most commanders i think rallying cry could be good for somebody like huo that you might be micromanaging but i'm not super confident that it's like really needed for saladin I don't know that's my opinion if you don't like buckler shield you can grab or try to grab disarm but despite having decent talent build options saladin runs into a unique problem in 2024 that alexander the great also suffers from and that is player psychology if i ever see a saladin as a primary commander in the open field i immediately will target that player because i assume that that player does not have a better commander to use as a primary they're using a kvk2 commander it's an older commander and so my assumption is that they're not as good of a player as me or they don't have as many good commanders or as much good uh, equipment or anything like that right like there's a lot of reasons why someone would be using a saladin and none of them are really great compelling reasons right so i assume if you're running saladin that i will be able to get easy kills off of you and that's a huge downside for saladin you can't really use him as a primary commander as effectively as he used to back in the day so by this point in the video i'm sure you kind of sense my frustration with saladin and that he's just super okay he's not great he's not horrible he's very okay I actually think that this is a pretty big problem for rise of kingdoms right now because one of the things that and I don't remember who commented it on my on my Alexander the Great video was somebody said that it was a great video and that it actually uh, made them want to come back to rise of kingdoms right so they they had quit rise of kingdoms they saw my Alexander the Great video and how I talked about how good Alexander the Great was with Liu Che and it made them want to come back and why is that that's because they see a way for them to use their old investments to catch up to the current meta in a way so they don't feel so far behind and i think that that's a really big problem with games like rise of kingdoms is that if you stop logging in for a month you feel so far behind all these other players right you didn't collect your daily uh, gold heads from the vip login for 30 days like oh my god that's you know for me that's 90 legendary commander sculptures right like i'm so far behind or oh i missed the last commander release cycle i didn't get liuche i didn't get herman prime oh my god i'm so far behind but 
if there's commanders like Alexander the Great and like Saladin, you know, if they're still usable and good in Season of Conquest, like they can compete with the meta, which arguably I think Saladin cannot right now, then it makes players more confident in their investments moving forward into Rise of Kingdoms. And it makes players more satisfied knowing that if they do quit the game, they can come back and they still have something that's decent and good for the meta right and so i think it's important that that commanders like saladin stay relevant for a long period of time and especially i mean it would be better if kvk1 commanders stay relevant relevant for a long period of time but kvk2 commanders as well and also on top of that saladin was always a great free-to-play option remember 5551 is 380 legendary commander sculptures you never needed the fourth skill you never needed the expertise and so to have a really solid early game free-to-play commander be relevant and compete with the meta in the late game i think would do a lot for player satisfaction now here's the part of the video where i'm going to be a little bit more optimistic because i've been very pessimistic about salad in all video and my optimism stems from two sources one is gorgo and two is herman what do these two commanders have in common well they are the two most recent commander release cycles okay we had we just had archers and prior to that we had infantry but gorgo came out and brought synergy for constantine and we had herman prime come out and he in theory had some synergy with tamiris now as it turns out there are better options for herman prime but this was the first time that we've ever seen poison since a kvk2 commander and so these two commander releases make me think that the developers are looking back at the kvk2 commanders and trying to implement things that could complement them and make them usable again and so if we can take that logic and extrapolate it out to the next releases which by the way i think we'll probably get leadership next and then we'll get potentially cavalry after that it really just depends it's been i think almost a year since our last leadership release with the ranged commanders and heraclius so kind of crazy how fast time flies but yeah i think we're due for leadership after that we'll probably be cavalry but that next cav cycle could potentially try to have synergy with either Saladin or Genghis Khan. Now, Herman's KBK2 counterpart Tamiris is a mightiest governor commander, and of course, Constantine was also a mightiest governor commander, and Saladin is no longer a mightiest governor commander. He's now on the wheel of fortune, but back in KBK2, he was a mightiest governor commander when he first came out. And so I think it's possible that the next cavalry release could see a commander that complements Saladin's kit and i think that that would be really good so what could the next potential cavalry commander have that would make saladin usable again well one idea is that it could have some mechanic related to healing reduction debuffs so this is a very long debuff five seconds and like we said before it doesn't really do anything so to get value out of this would be really nice and that synergy could be in the form of a skill on this hypothetical new commander that says deal 200 damage factor for every second that the enemy has a healing received debuff right and then all of a sudden this useless 40 percent healing reduction debuff turns into a thousand damage factor which would effectively make his direct damage factor 2400 and that is on par with things like nevsky right so i think that would, that would be good and then you might be saying well omniarch i mean hang on we talked about how bad sargon is because his damage ticks over time but the thing about this debuff is the entire duration of the debuff is applied instantaneously so for example once you hit them with your active skill on saladin even if you run away they still have five seconds of that debuff right as long as they're on the as long as they're on the map and 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 they don't die or they don't retreat into a city or something like that so even if you hit them with your active skill and then retreat they would still be taking that damage over time in my mind like in theory that's how i would want them to code it i wouldn't want them to code it like a sargon you know damage over time i think that would be horrible but they could even make it more simple than that they could just make it you know if you inflict a healing received debuff on the target deal a thousand damage factor or something like that right or they could make it the case that if you apply a healing reduction to a target deal a forward facing fan shaped area you know 600 damage factor to three targets 15 percent reduced for each target something like that right think of think of like chook's aoe when he's expertise or something like that right like a small aoe fan or like think of the fourth skill on juge leong right just a small aoe fan that that occurs when you apply a healing reduction right and the reason that i'm focusing on healing reduction is because as we said before there's so many march speed reductions in the game that i think if the next commander for cavalry did some sort of damage that scaled off of march speed reduction i think we would probably just pair him with one of the better march speed reduction commanders like huo for example right so 
I'm not sure that, you know, scaling off of that would really move the needle for Saladin, but if they focused on healing reduction, I think that that could be something really good. And of course, the other thing we have to touch on is the relic. Uh, I mentioned this earlier that it's a very small relic here. And one thing that we know for sure is that the season one commanders got a double relic. And I think that eventually they will possibly do that for season two commanders as well and if they do i think they'd really have to bump this up to move the needle for saladin i think we would need to see like 25 percent attack 15 percent march speed or something like that or like 30 and 20. i mean that would be nice because then even though his damage factor is a bit lower at least he'll be tanky and have a bunch of attack stats to loan to whoever he's paired with like i said huo for example so while saladin might be a bit average these days i think if we did see a nice bump to his relic and then a new cavalry commander come into the game that scales off of healing effect reduction saladin could see himself back in the meta by the end of the year now that is hopeful wishful thinking and i would not invest in him today banking on that fact but i don't think all hope is lost for saladin he's just in a really bad spot right now and i think the developers do have a good incentive to make him good again like i said earlier if players know that they can come back to the game and have commanders that fit into the meta already from back when they used to play in 2020 that would be really healthy for the player base in my opinion now, the last piece of information that i want you guys to think about remember the developers have already announced that they're going to be releasing at least one if not more new formations coming to rise of kingdoms they already talked i think it was the testudo formation they've revealed will i guess bump up either shield and healing or it was one or the other but they've already confirmed that that's something that they're considering to do now of course until it's in the game they could always change it right but it seemed to be the case that they were pretty set on releasing the testudo formation with buffs to healing and shielding and if that is indeed the case and they do proceed to do that then I think it's also logical to assume perhaps later in this year, we might see new commanders that come into the game that have shields and healing. And so if we see new powerful healing commanders, then all of a sudden the healing received debuff from Saladin becomes suddenly very relevant again. Okay. Now keep in mind, healing in the open field is actually extremely good. The only downside is that healing factor has been super power crept out of the game and it only exists on Richard. Basically, uh, it, of course it exists other places, but the most powerful and consistent healing is, is Richard. Okay. We all know that, but what's to say that, you know, they could drop a commander in the game with a 3000 healing factor and a bunch of other stuff on their kit that makes them like not only deal decent damage, but just be insanely tanky. And if they do that, then suddenly having a 40% reduction in that healing would be really impactful. Okay. So not all hope is lost for Saladin moving forward into 2024. There's multiple different things that could occur that could bring him back into the meta. It's just a matter of if the developers decide to do that to give that support back to Saladin and have him be dominant on the open field once again. And honestly, I hope it happens. I want to see Saladin come back. I think his design is awesome. I think he's a very popular commander. I think he's a great free to play commander. I think Saladin has everything going for him and players really like him. And so I hope that he does come back. But guys, with that being said, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it. Comment down below your thoughts on Saladin today. Do you think I was a little bit too harsh on him or do you think that he really is past his prime and do you think that we could see him make a comeback in 2024 i would love to hear from you guys down there and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace